Hello, Claudia. Hey, Conrad. How are you? How are you doing? How was your still, weekend? Still alive and kicking. Yeah, right? <laughs> Happy Monday to you. It's almost like we have to wear two masks now. One for, for the pandemic and one for the air quality, right? Exactly. Oh, my wow. gosh. It's amazing. You know, for the first time, of course, like probably many people are watching a lot of news to see where the fires are and what's happening to them. Yeah. I saw on our local KMRI newscast the other day, uh, them showing yeah. a full screen of all the various cameras that are around California, or I don't know if it was California or, or the United States, but they were showing how many of them had the orangish hue to them with all the fires. And I've never seen that view before, and it was really interesting. Wow. There were 100 fires at that time going all at the same time. Oh my Amazing. Gosh. I Maybe. know we saw postings from everywhere, but that had to be particularly um, eerie. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's our, our Palm Springs looks kind of normal now, but yes. we're near, not still not supposed to be outside doing heavy exercise. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, one of the first one of the first things I do one of the first things I do when I get up in the morning because I get up pretty early except because I want to go for a walk. I go to my phone and I see what the air quality is right. to, to right. decide whether I'm going out or not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, but, but regardless of that, regardless of that, our city is still, the, the, the Coachella Valley is still moving right along. Things are Oh happening. my gosh, Palm Springs was bustling this weekend. And even when you really weren't supposed to be out, I mean, I didn't think I would feel comfortable like just eating outdoors, you know, on uh, Sunday. But um, I mean, Saturday, actually Saturday, Saturday night, it was bustling of all the tables and the and in Palm Canyon, where the streets are closed, like we did our episode last week. Yes. Filled, filled. I know. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to say that also because I heard that uh, La Quinta also has an area that they have blocked off that does parklets. So maybe you and I soon will get a, a connection out there and we'll go do a show from out there to show yeah, everybody. Yeah, that would be what's interesting. Over there. definitely have to check that out. Yeah. And that I also be- heard that Palm Desert is getting ready to do the same thing for El Paseo Street. Right. So, once they get themselves organized there, we'll see if we can get out there and do a- And that a seems show. like a nat- natural because they have a beautiful boulevard and yes. it would be, I think that would be just well, you know, well received. Yes, most yeah. definitely. So that would be and so. Besides these outdoor parklets coming along, uh, the drive-in, th- remember, the, it's so interesting we're talking about drive-ins. It's 2020 and we're talking about drive-ins, but they are yeah. the big thing. We and already know that- all over, right? <laughs> everywhere, we already know that uh, uh, the Palm Springs Cultural Center has one. We know that uh, the Mary Pickford is getting ready to open theirs mm-hmm. uh, sometime this month. And I just saw that the Palm Springs Air Museum also has a drive-in theater. I think theater. that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's totally cool. I don't know about you. They but should show I was, airplane. Yeah, really? I, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> Actually, it's my understanding, the idea behind the museum, each one of them, is a, each experience is a little different, which is really good. And yeah. what I read from the, the experience at the museum is that when you get your ticket, it also gives you an opportunity to go, uh, a ticket to see the planes that are outdoors before you go to see the movie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because it's a, a beautiful display of old vintage aircraft, right? right. Yeah. And they are also associated somehow with McDonald's. So every ticket that you buy also gets you some kind of McDonald's meal. Who knew? Oh, there's like McDonald's. Do they have a McDonald's pop up there, or you have to go go to the McDonald's? I think you. I think your ticket gets you something to buy at McDonald's. You can bring it to see the movie. I guess. Okay. We'll, we'll find out soon. But it's very interesting the way it's working out. Everyone has their little niche, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, just wait for us in the coming coming weeks. We'll be driving everywhere, right? <laughs> that's right, exactly. So, well, you know, downtown also. Yes. Uh, we all we all know the art pit, which is in front of the museum, and that's where the babies are. And there's Correct. some great murals, and and now the new addition is the fault line meditation. And that's right. It's isn't it just striking when you see it. Well, you know, in the daytime, it's like, whoa, what's that? And then yeah. you're like, oh, it's all kind of red, red, like a red orange. Yeah, but at I, night, it totally illuminates. I mean, well, when you told me about it, I, I, I think I remember, I think I mentioned to you, I'm going to go down and see it because I want to know what you, what, because we're going to see a, a segment, a little clip right. on you doing an interview and you going down into the pit and talking to the artist, which I want to talk about in a few seconds. 
but I wanted to go and see what you had seen, but I went during the daytime. And I have to tell you, when I looked down from above, I thought, okay, okay. And then I read the information read, about yeah, what he was- You can read about what's up, what's down there, yeah. So tell, tell us, what did you, we're gonna learn about it in the clip, but give us well, a little bit of- The artist is, and I think a lot of people around town know him because he's so anima, animated, so personable. And he's quite a visionary. His name is Jeremiah Solomon, but he goes by Jev Pick. And he also has, he's also a great photographer. So he has two Instagram accounts. One is the Fault Line Meditation and the other is Jev Pick, which is just photography, just really, really cool stuff. So it's worth checking out his personal uh, uh, page too. But this but is about... This is about the fault line, right? The fault line meditation, the, the, the piece that he put in has quite a story that he is going to tell us about the meaning of it, the, you know, it's not my fault, it's not your fault, it's just a fault. And then he goes on with a big, you know, it, it's almost like poetry or a stream of consciousness when you listen to him wow. talk. I think he's great, you know. Well and, and to walk it at night, whoa, wait till you see the shots in this piece we're gonna, we're gonna show you. And you were, you were very fortunate in that most, everyone else who's gonna go see this exhibit will see it from up above. You actually did the interview with the, with the artist and so you were able to go yeah. downstairs mm -hmm. and actually walk the fault line. He, he does, um, he did say he liked to be there on the weekends in the evening. So if you catch him, he may just let you down into the pit because he's got an, um, he's got access to the entry, you know, otherwise the whole city would be walking through the babies exactly. and, you know, exactly. but they have well, to kind of keep it protected. Well, let's, let's take a look at the, uh, the clip. And I think it's, oh, I want to let our, our viewers know this is a, a very artistic design that uh, Alan has, our director has an editor who has put together. So it's artistic view of this, this, uh, this uh, uh, exhibition. Yeah. Let's take a look. Enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Fault Line Meditation. That's right, sometimes you have to repeat things in your mind over and over again, like, today is going to be a good day. If you repeat that to yourself three times in the morning, guess what? Chances are it's gonna be an amazing day. Well, the Fault Line is exactly that sort of meditation too. Like this sign, for example. It says it's not mine. So this Fault Line is a representation of the San Andreas Fault. So that fault is something that people tremble about. They tremble in fear thinking that the big earthquake is gonna come, which it will someday. We know that because of science. But also we know that faults are meant for growth. They're all around the planet. They cause growth, they cause friction, they cause times of uncertainty and instability. And when that time happens, you have to realize, are you gonna let the earth move you? Or are you gonna move with the earth? Are you gonna be able to take any situation that comes your way and turn that energy into something that makes you a better human? A human that makes the world a little bit better? See, this fault right here, it's not my fault. And you know what, it's not your fault, it's just a fault. This fault has been here before we were ever born, and it will be here long after we're gone. It's a fault. The only thing that could change is us. So beware of those danger words like I can't, or I'm not good enough, or why did I do that? You have to just learn, grow, and move on, and do not get paralyzed on that fault. Don't forget that when the earth shakes, we move and grow. If you're being challenged, you're growing. So let's grow together. Let's grow for the good. 
and let's turn our fears into meditations. And let's start with this example, the fault line meditation. Come on, let's go. I want you to close your eyes for a second and I want you to envision something that makes you feel strong, something that holds you down, okay? And the righteousness in between. So if you could find two things, one thing that gets you hyped up and one thing that makes you low, just look at those two things and hold on to them for a second. All right, the fault line meditation. I want you to hold your intention of balance while you walk. That you're not gonna enjoy that thing that makes you happy and you're not gonna be scared or low or sad of the thing that tries to pull you down. So the thing that makes you so happy, you're not gonna hold on to that and the thing that lets you down, you're not gonna hold on to that, okay? So let's go ahead and walk. And I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to release all of your muscles. I want you to be able to feel your shoulders rolling. I want you to feel the ground beneath your feet, okay? I want you to imagine that thing that makes you very happy. And I want you to know, just because it makes you very, very, very happy, it's only you that makes you happy. You make you happy, not that object doesn't make you happy. We let go of that because it's you. Now, we have something else, something that's trying to slow you down and pull you down. Well, that doesn't exist. You want to know how to get out of that? By realizing you're not in it. That's just the story. You let go of that because that's the story that you heard and now you repeat and now you tell yourself. So if you let go of that, you become your essence and yourself. You become who you're meant to be, what your baseline is, you really are. 